video number 9, I showed you my CTC panel made from a picture frame and some LED strips. I mainly focused on the making of the panel and a quick demonstration of using it. So it is time now to take it down, turn around and have a closer look what's inside the yellow box. Hello YouTubers and welcome to the Internet of Toy Trains. I am Hans Tanner and here is a new episode of IOTT with fresh ideas about how to use the Internet of Things along with sensors and microcontrollers to control a model railroad layout. So, get on board! The train is leaving the station! The first component to look at is the controller board. I am using a Note MCU32S featuring an Espressif ESP32 module. You find links to technical information about this $6 module in the description of this video. In a nutshell, the ESP32 is a dual-core controller with 500KB RAM to megabyte flash, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. The Node MCU board exposes 32 general purpose I.O. pins, of which 10 have the touch functionality I am interested in. Furthermore, the board can be programmed using the Arduino IDE and the Arduino implementation by now supports pretty much all functions of the ESP32. Most importantly, it supports using both cores in parallel and making use of the RTOS, the real-time operating system for multitasking. Overall, the ESP32 has about 120 times the power of a standard Arduino Uno board, which makes it an excellent choice for almost all IoT projects. One of the ESP32 features I was most interested in for this project is the touch inputs. This was a new and unknown feature for me, so I had to do some research first and play with those inputs. The ESP32 touch pins are so called capacitive touch pins. Touch is determined by measuring the charge and discharge times of the capacitor formed by the conductor that is attached to it. If this conductor is touched, the capacity changes resulting in a changed timing, which then is interpreted as an analog value. So, in the first step, I wanted to know the range of values I will get from the touchpads. I used a simple Arduino sketch to get the results in the table. I measured first without any connection, then with just a wire attached, and finally with me touching the end of the wire. The results show that GPIO 0 and 2 cannot be used as touch inputs. The reason is that they have some components attached to it that are used for rebooting and flashing the board. The other pins are pretty much in a similar range of values and most importantly there is a significant difference between touched and untouched status. So 8 of them can be used. While doing the tests I also noticed that on my board GPIOs 32 and 33 are exchanged compared to the published drawings of the Node MCU 32S. Useful to know, I guess. So far so good, but a CTC panel with a maximum of 8 activator buttons may not be what most of us are looking for. So I wondered whether it would be possible to use an analog multiplexer to make each input line into 16 different ones. I picked the 74HC4067 MUX and connected it to one of the GPIOs. Then I added the MUX library to my sketch so that I could select individual inputs. A first test showed that the untouched value came down from around 80 to between 15 and 20 because of the capacitive effect of the multiplexer. That was to be expected, even though I hoped it would be less than that. But what about the touched values? And would it be possible to cycle through these 16 inputs and still get reliable results? In order to find out, I wrote a second sketch to test the 16 MUX inputs on just one touch input of the ESP32. The results are in this table. As expected, the difference between touched and untouched became much smaller, but also the impact of the wire and particularly the wire length was dramatically reduced and overall it seems the system became much more stable with values fluctuating much less. Based on these results 
I decided to use a multiplexer on four touch inputs, which gives a total of 64 touch inputs that can be used to activate switches and routes on the CTC panel. So I modified the MUX library to support an array of input pins instead of just one. You can find the modified library along with the test sketches I used on my GitHub page. I then prototyped the touch input system using an LED strip and selected a touch value of 11. I was now able to touch the end of a wire and the corresponding LED would change from blue to red, indicating the touch. I tested it for touch inputs 13, 12, 14 and 27, which would be the inputs to be used in the yellow box. I added some software filtering to eliminate any false positives and got rid of all flickering. Overall, this looked very promising. The other challenge was to develop the communication with Loconet. On the hardware side, I recycled one of my spare boards I made for the MQTT gateway, so this was easy. The software side was somewhat more challenging. If you watched my MQTT gateway videos, you know that there I modified the software serial library to support Loconet. I did this because the ESP8266 is short on serial ports. The ESP32 on the other hand has three onboard hardware serial ports, so it would be much easier on the processor to use one of them. The problem with this is that it is no longer possible to do collision detection on bit level. It is only possible to verify entire echo bytes. But this is ok with the local net standard. The other thing to consider is that the hardware serial port has its own data buffer which creates somewhat a distance between the physical LocoNet and the driver logic when it comes to ecobyte verification. So I finally decided on using a three-tier structure and use a separate task of the real-time operating system to drive the lowest level of hardware access control, transmit, receive and collision detection. Here is how it looks like. From the application side, the library provides functions for writing commands to Loconet, checking if incoming commands are available, and reading received commands. If incoming data is just an echo from transmitted data, it is marked with the echo flag. There is also a flag indicating that there was a collision, if applicable. Inside the library, there is a task dealing with the hardware details, sending, receiving and carrier detection. Looking at the task code, we see three work steps. First, the LocoNet is checked to see if it is busy. If it is, the busy timer is restarted. This timer is used to measure the CD backoff time. In the second step, we check for incoming data and process it. All incoming data needs to be processed before something can be sent out to LocoNet. In this sequence, we also verify for collisions by comparing the incoming data with the data in the verification buffer. If it is not identical, we know there was a collision somewhere along the line. Finally, if the network is available and data is in the buffer, we initiate the transmit process by writing the first data byte into the hardware serial buffer. This starts transmission immediately and while the serial port is transmitting, there is plenty of time to move the remaining bytes of the message into the transfer and into the verification buffer as well. To make it work, the application needs to repetitively call the processing function. This can either be done from the application's main loop or even better in a dedicated task of the ESP32. I have tested both ways and they seem to work well. Sending a complete data byte at the LocoNet baud rate takes about 600 microseconds. So as long as the processing function is called within about that frequency, or a little faster, all should be good. Also here, I have uploaded the library to my GitHub page for you to play with. Let me know if it works or if you run into problems somewhere. This was the hardware level review of the CTC panel components. As always, I have uploaded more information to my GitHub page. You will find there the modified Arduino libraries and test sketches, as well as the complete electrical schematics. Here is a summary of what we have learned today. The ESP32 is an incredibly powerful controller. 
The dual core architecture with about 120 times the performance of an Arduino Uno and the onboard real time operating system to me makes it the controller of choice for a lot of projects. The touch feature is very promising. I was positively surprised to see how stable the touch signals are and how big the difference is between touched and not touched status. This is a good basis for the touch operation on the CTC panel. The other surprise was the strength of the touch signals even when feeding them through an analog multiplexer. Using this concept, each touch input can serve 16 buttons. Using 4 inputs gives therefore 64 buttons, which should be enough even for a bigger CTC panel. Thanks to 3 hardware serial ports on the ESP32, it is possible to use one of them for LocoNet communication. The default port then can be used for debugging and one is still available should it be needed for something else. That's it for today. If the information in this video was useful or at least interesting for you, please click that like button below to let me know. In the next video we will start looking into the configuration of all those LEDs and buttons to display meaningful information on the CTC panel. The most important thing thereby is to make it as simple as possible so that even a large CTC panel can be configured without needing a PhD in computer science and within a reasonable amount of time. If you are interested in this topic stay tuned and subscribe to the IOTT channel so you will be notified when the next video comes out. Thanks for watching and see you next time!